the skin you can think of like a brick wall. So there are the bricks, and those are the cells that make up the outer layer of skin, known as the stratum corneum, and they're called corneocytes. In between those bricks are lipids, which are fatty substances, like oils. And those oils actually are the mortar for the brick wall. When you get dry skin, the bricks remain in place, but the cleansers remove all of the mortar. And think about it, when you take the mortar out of a brick wall and you push on it, what happens? It falls apart. So the first thing a moisturizer does when you put it on is all moisturizers contain some oily substance. And that oily substance prevents water from evaporating from your skin. The second thing that has to happen is that repair and healing must occur. Then what the body does is it makes more of those oily substances to replace those fats known as intracellular lipids. So your body remakes the mortar that goes in your brick wall, and when it does that, your skin returns to health. Some of your ointment moisturizers are good for extra dry areas. Those are going to be things like hands, feet, elbows, knees. Then there are moisturizers that need to spread over larger body areas. That would be like a cream if you wanted to put it on your chest, neck, and back. And then there are moisturizers that are specially designed for the face, designed not to cause acne, designed not to cause irritation. So you can customize the needs of every body area with a moisturizer formula that's available today for purchase. Well, a moisturizer needs to accomplish three goals. It needs to stop water loss. And those are substances that occlude the skin surface called occlusives. Petrolatum is by far the best ingredient there, but it's a little greasy. So some people use other ingredients such as lanolin, mineral oil, etc. The second type of ingredient that you need in a moisturizer is you need a humectant. That's a sponge. Because when you trap water in the skin, you have to hold it there. So the body has natural humectants. They're present down in the second layer of skin known as the dermis. The most important humectant in the body is hyaluronic acid. But there are others such as glycerin, which are also important. And then finally, you need something to make the skin feel smooth and soft. I mean, that's something that consumers want. Smooth and soft is something delivered by an emollient. And many of those are derivatives of silicone oils, such as dimethicone. So those three key ingredients can provide all the healing qualities, all the moisturizing qualities necessary. It is sometimes bewildering for the consumer to turn the bottle over and read all the ingredients that are present in a moisturizer, for example. Scientifically, we have to be very exact. We have to specify exactly which ingredient is used, and that's important. So the big names are scientific names, not scary names, but they're used to define a specific compound, of which we have many hundreds of thousands, millions of compounds that are present on the earth today for us to use. If you have any questions about the safety of that ingredient, you can talk to your dermatologist who can easily offer additional information. Many people are wearing gloves for longer and more frequently than ever before. And indeed, wearing gloves is an excellent way to prevent yourself from getting an infection. But when you purchase gloves, always purchase the powder-free ones. And you can get latex-free nitrile and latex-containing gloves, both of which that are powder-free that contain dimethicone. Dimethicone is also a moisturizer for the skin. So it is not necessary to apply any type of an extra moisturizer when you're wearing gloves. Certainly after you take your hands out of the glove, that would be an excellent time to moisturize. But putting moisturizer inside the glove is going to give you a nice gooey mess, and I would advise against that.